Yu-Gi-Oh! can definitely be a very expensive game. Right now, we have cards like Forbidden Droplet and Triple Tactics Talent and Pot of Prosperity and so many others that are out of a lot of players' budgets. And Yu-Gi-Oh! has sort of always been this way as someone that used to be on a very strict budget like back in high school and early on in college, I know how difficult and frustrating it can be to be a budget player. However, in today's video, I'm going to go over some of my best tips for being a budget Yu-Gi-Oh player in 2021. Now, budget can mean a lot of different things to different people. Maybe it's $10 a month, maybe it's $100 a month, maybe it's $1,000 or $2,000 a month. While I feel like the tips in today's video can be applied to pretty much any budget, I do want to primarily focus on those of you that have less than $100 a month to spend on Yu-Gi-Oh because that's the area where you really have to be careful with buying Yu-Gi-Oh cards and making the most out of your dollar. So if you are one of those players, please stick around as I go through the different tips in today's discussion. If you guys enjoy this video at any point, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future Yu-Gi-Oh content. First, let's talk about deck building on a budget. How do you get the most out of your dollar when you are first trying to build a deck? Well, one of the biggest tips that I have is that look for decks where the expensive cards are not crucial for the actual combos. That might sound a little bit weird, but let me explain. In the past, when I've done Altergeist deck profiles, I've always seen comments from people asking, can I play the deck without Pot of Extravagance? And the answer is yes, you can play Altergeist without Pot of Extravagance. Your deck will just be a little bit less consistent. I also was just asked this question yesterday when I was testing Madolce on stream because someone asked, can you play the deck without Pot of Prosperity? And once again, I said, yes, you can, but the deck will be less consistent. And that's okay. It's okay taking that type of compromise, especially if you're only playing at a more casual level or only playing at locals. And when they open up again, if you're only playing at regional qualifiers, yes, your deck will be less consistent. And yes, you will notice it from time to time, but in a case like Altergeist or a case like Madolce, your deck and all of its combos will still work without Pot of Extravagance or Pot of Prosperity. And that's a really good deck to look towards when you're on a budget, a deck where the expensive cards that it needs don't really affect the core combo. Don't look at decks where you need a staple three of, that's like $100 a copy, and that card is required to make the deck work. This is also a great idea because it means if you happen to get lucky with like an entry pack pull or maybe you save up some store credit at your locals, you can put it towards one of those expensive cards and just add it into your already existing deck. When budget players are deck building, I always like to tell people, pick a deck where you can add on to it if your budget expands in the future or if you can save up money for bigger cards. Speaking of expensive cards, what do you do if you've saved up a little bit of money and you can afford one of the popular expensive cards, but you don't know which one to choose. Well, in my opinion, you want to go towards the one that is the most generic, the card that is going to be good for the longest amount of time. I've used this example in the past, but I bought Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring way back when it first came out for I think $40 to $50 each. And while that might sound like a lot of money for only three cards, because you could buy a lot more cards with $150, I do want to say here that I got a ton of value out of those Ash Blossoms before they were reprinted, and even nowadays I still own those same three copies. So I was able to play those in regionals and YCSs and locals and even WCQs for years, and I got a ton of value out of that initial $150 investment. When you are thinking of buying cards that are expensive, you have to think about how many tournaments you'll be able to play them in before they'll get a reprint. So because I was able to buy those Ash Blossoms pretty much right when they came out, I was able to get a ton of use out of them before any reprint was announced. Now right now there aren't nearly as many events going on as we've seen in the past. You do have like the extravaganza events which are really cool. We also just had a remote dual YCS announcement and that's really exciting, but you don't have the usual regionals and YCSs and WCQs that we used to have. 
have. So you probably don't need to buy a bunch of expensive cards if you are on a tighter budget, and that's perfectly fine. But when events open up again and people are going to them more frequently, I would definitely reevaluate those expensive generic cards and say, yes, this card is expensive, but I have locals every single week and I have two regionals coming up and I may be considering going to that YCS in a few months. Maybe I can buy this card if I can justify using it for the next several months. And there certainly are tons of cards like that in Yu-Gi-Oh right now, especially. It's all about looking at your own budget, which I mean, that's up to you. And then asking yourself, okay, which expensive cards am I willing to purchase? Which ones do I think I'll get the most mileage out of? The answer might be I don't have the budget for any of these cards and that's perfectly fine. But if you are in the market for expensive cards, but maybe only one playset of one card, then definitely consider which one you'll get the most use out of. Another way to make the most out of your own budget is to pay attention to the upcoming reprints that Konami has announced. So right now, the big one that I'm thinking of is the 2021 Tin of Ancient Battles, this year's Mega Tin. So Konami has already told us that in this tin, we'll have reprints for sets like Ignition Assault, Eternity Code, Rise of the Duelist, and Phantom Rage. They also have and more, but we don't know exactly what that will be. But we do know that those four core sets will have reprints in this tin. And that means right now, if you are looking to buy cards from those sets, especially the more expensive secret rares, maybe you should hold off on that if you can, because these are releasing in September of 2021. And if you don't have any tournaments for the next few months, maybe you don't need to buy those super expensive cards. It really does save you a lot of money to pay attention to what reprints have already been revealed. Konami has tons of different ways to reveal reprints. They'll put the reprint announcements on the official website, they'll put them on the database other times, and in some cases, they'll even send YouTubers the products early so that they can open them for their audience and then the viewers can see the set for the very first time. Now, right now, this doesn't really matter, but I do want to mention if you have an event coming up that you need cards for, but the reprints have already been announced, maybe in that situation, it's okay if you can afford it to buy those cards anyway. It's not ideal, but I think back to like the 2017 WCQ, I was pretty sure the Zodiacs were going to be in that year's Mega Tins, but I needed them for that event, so I had to buy them anyway. And yeah, a few months later, they got reprinted, and then a few months after that, they got banned but I needed them for that 2017 WCQ, so I bought them anyway. I wouldn't advise doing that unless you have no other options, but it is a case where you'd maybe be more willing to buy a card even if a reprint was announced. Finally, be really careful with sealed product. There's nothing wrong with buying a box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards or even just a few packs. However, if you are on a very strict budget, maybe don't buy as much sealed product as you might want to. If you are trying to get the most out of your dollar, buying singles is usually the way to go. A lot of locals will sell singles behind the counter. I know most of the locals that I've been to over the years do that, and also some of them will even have membership programs. I know the main local that I go to has one of those, and basically I pay a small fee every year, and then I get a discount on sealed product and the singles in the case. So there there are tons of ways to buy singles without breaking the bank. That is one of them. You can also use discount codes online. You can also go to tcgplayer.com if you want to. There are a lot of ways to get Yu-Gi-Oh cards and sealed product isn't always the best way to do so. Now there are sets that are better to open sealed than others. For example, structure decks are always great. I know a lot of people like those. Reprint sets are usually pretty good. Things like dual power or dual overload have have been really good in the past and honestly are even pretty good right now. Dual Devastator is probably the best sealed product in the entire game as far as deck building goes. You can get a ton of value out of that set even nowadays, which is really crazy. Konami did a fantastic job with that release and I really hope they release a sequel in the future with some updated card choices. But even right now, like I said, that set is still a great purchase. Anyway, that is all for today 
today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.